G'day guys, my name is Michael Woolhouse and welcome to ABCPE. This is the site where we try and make VCE physical education as easy as ABC. Today's first lesson is going to be on Newton's first law. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, we know some of you are a little bit nervous about doing biomechanics, particularly those of you that are doing a Unit 3-4 subject for the very first time. But don't worry, we're here to help. And we reckon the first way that we can help you is by you following this simple analogy. It's called the DEEP principle. So whenever you go a biomechanics question, what we want you to do with it is to go DEEP. And by that we mean D, define that principle. So whatever the law might be, we want you to start with a definition. Secondly, E is for equation. Now not every biomechanical principle comes along with an equation, but most of them do. So whenever you get the chance, use the equation. The second E is for the explanation. That's the hard part, we'll get into that a little bit later. And finally, with a lot of your uh, physical education questions, especially in Unit 3-4, the performance mark at the end of your question, pretty much regardless of the topic you're doing, is a really big differentiator between the really good students and the rest of the pack. So stick with that deep principle and you think will go well. Okay, so let's put the deep principle into action. And in particular, let's relate it to Newton's first law, the law of inertia. First, we want you to define it. This is your entry level mark, and this will get you one mark for most of your biomechanic questions. And in this case, Newton's first law states that an object will remain at rest or in its current state unless acted upon by an outside force. E for equation. Now, most of the biomechanical principles you'll learn this year will have an equation attached. It might be force equals mass times acceleration, it might be an impulse where force times time equals impulse. But for some of these simpler um, principles, like the Newton's first law of inertia, then that isn't an equation. So we're just going to skip that step this time. Now we get to the heart of it, the explanation. For those of you looking for the better marks, you're going to have to demonstrate that you know the principle well enough to explain it whatever circumstances you're presented with. So for Newton's first law, a pretty simple explanation to hopefully help you remember is that things are lazy. That means they want to continue doing whatever it is they were doing. They'll only change their state if they're acted upon by an unbalanced force. The unbalanced force is usually a person or a golf club or a cricket bat, whatever it might be, and then that'll change the object's current state. Finally, the performance part of the question. And as I said previously, this can be a big differentiator between a good answer and a great answer. So how can the biomechanical principle that you're talking about either improve or be detrimental to performance? So in terms of Newton's first law of inertia, Basically, something that is heavier has a greater inertia, and therefore if you want to move a heavy object, you have to apply more force to it. So this is me, a horrendous golfer, trying to put Newton's first law into action. A good rule of thumb is don't overcomplicate these principles. Newton's first law states that this yellow ball will stay in its current state, which is still, unless acted upon by an external force. In this case, the external force is me moving the golf club. That's it. Now if you wanted to go a little further with this principle, once I've hit the yellow ball, it will continue until acted upon by another external force, which in this case is the window. And because I'm an idiot, it nearly comes back and smashes me in the head. Now just to go a tiny bit further, I'm going to try and hit a medicine ball. Medicine ball is obviously heavier than the yellow ball, therefore it's got a greater inertia. This means that if I want to change its current state, which is uh, sitting still here on the ground, I'm going to have to apply an even greater force than what I applied to the yellow ball in order to move it. Okay, so now let's put this into action. This is question 1D from the 2019 VCEP exam. Explain how Newton's first law relates to the free throw in basketball. And it was worth two marks. Remember, we still want you to go deep on these questions. So one mark in this question was allocated to defining Newton's first law. So one mark to say an object will stay at rest or in a constant motion unless acted upon by external forces. Now there's no equation for Newton's first law, so we can skip that step. So the second mark for this question is the explanation. The explanation in this case is 
that the ball will remain stationary unless acted upon by an external force, which is the basketballer, when he or she throws it towards the hoop. And that's it guys. That's Newton's first law. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next lesson. Cheers.